Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today in our Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos coverage, we're going to take a look at two new feats available to players now. So thanks for clicking on this video and watching it here. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I think it's possible. I think we can do it. We only need just over 500. I mean, that's a pretty big jump, but I think we can do it. Uh, so all of our Strict Saving videos, they're all in this one super duper big playlist. Check that out. We're going to keep adding videos to that. Uh, we are going to burn over the weekend. We are. I even took Monday and Tuesday off. If you're watching this real time, that's going to make sense. Uh, otherwise, you're going to say, well, I don't care. Why'd you take Monday, Tuesday off? I don't know. It's to get these videos out to you. So, so please reward that precious, precious vacation time <laughs> with, with, uh, with a thumbs up, with a comment, with a like, with, uh, with a share, with something, please. And thank you. All right. So there are two feats in this book. Both are heavily, heavily, heavily tied into Strixhaven. Both are tied closely to your background. Both are tied to being in the school. Uh, one of them you can theoretically take outside of that. And then the other one you can maybe follow up with that. But these aren't like really like normal feats. These are, they might be kind of weird to have outside of a Strixhaven campaign. So what does that mean? Let's take a look. Strixhaven initiate. You've studied some magical theory and have learned a few spells associated with Strixhaven University. Choose one of the Strixhaven Colleges, Lorehold, Prismari, Quandrix, Silverquill, or Witherbloom. You learn two cantrips and one first level spell based on the college you choose, as specified in the Strixhaven Spells table. You can cast the chosen first level spell without a spell slot, and you must finish a long rest before you can cast it this way again. You can also cast the spell using any spell slots you have. Your spellcasting ability for this feat spells is intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Choose when you select this feat. Okay, so before we jump into the actual spells that you're getting with this, one of the ways, and we're gonna do a full video on that, so so stay tuned. Uh, if you're watching this again, as we're publishing these, that's the next video I'm gonna try to do, uh, is on the backgrounds. So with your backgrounds, with a Strixhaven background, you get this feat for free. And it's tied to whichever college you're in. So if you're if you're taking the lore hold background, you're getting the lore hold version of this spell, of this feat. So uh, if you are playing a, a, a Ravenloft, I don't know, uh, any kind of random campaign unrelated to Strixhaven, I think it's fair. I think it's fair for the DM to maybe not allow these. Now, do I think these on their own are super overpowered? No, I, I don't think. I think they're, they're where magic initiate should be. Uh, by being able to use those spell slots uh, and just knowing the spells, I think, I think that's a, I think this is what Magic Initiate should look like. But I can see the lore-wise, not allowing it. So what spells do you get? Well, these are all tied very closely again to those colleges. So here you go, Lore Hold. Choose two from Light, Sacred Flame, and Thaumaturgy. Choose one first level, cleric or wizard spell, Prismari. Choose two from Firebolt, Prestidigitation, and Ray of Frost. And choose one first level Bard or Sorcerer spell. Quandrix, choose two from Druidcraft, Guidance, and Mage Hand. And choose one first level Druid or Wizard spell. Silverquill, choose two from Sacred Flame, Thaumaturgy, and Vicious Mockery. Choose one first level Bard or Cleric spell. And Witherbloom, Choose two from Chill Touch, Druid Craft, and Spare the Dying. And choose one first level Druid or Wizard spell. I think those are all really cool options. I think they're super duper flavorful, uh, which is something I, I always appreciate when things are kind of thematic, when they make sense. So I'm totally, totally on board with that. Uh, some of them are a little uh, stronger, or not stronger, but uh, easier picks, I guess. Um, let's see, which one was it? Uh, Quandrix, choose from Druidcraft, Guidance, and Mage Hand. Who's picking Druidcraft? Like, I guess if you have a different feat that gives you, like, Mage Hand, like, Telekinetic or something, sure, pick it up because you don't already have it, but... <laughs> Dru I mean, come on. It's Druidcraft. So I like this feat a lot. Strixhaven Initiate, on its own, kind of in a vacuum, I think is totally cool. Uh, where I... I 
could definitely see some some problems is when we are getting this for free with your background but we'll save all that for the actual background uh video which which we'll do later now uh, a lot of these you can get wizard spells as as in one of your options right and when i first read this i was like oh easy first level spell wizard spell find familiar hands down hands down that's what i'm taking however our next feat makes you maybe not want to pick that so up next we have Strixhaven Mascot. Prerequisite, fourth level, and Strixhaven Initiate feat. You have learned how to summon a Strixhaven Mascot to assist you, granting you these benefits. So first of all, very, what other feat has a level requirement? And we have an, an, uh, like a, a feat tree here almost, where you have to have this one feat to get another feat. I think this is pretty interesting. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with heavily investing in a theme to get some really powerful rewards. So this is unusual, but I like it. You can cast the find familiar spell as a ritual. Your familiar can take the form of the mascot associated with the college you chose for the Strixhaven initiate feat. A spirit statue mascot for Lorehold, an art elemental mascot for Prismari, a fractal mascot for Quandrix, an inkling mascot for Silverquill, and a pest mascot, Witherbloom. Stat blocks for these creatures are in chapter seven. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can forego one attack to allow your mascot familiar to make one attack of its own with its reaction. If your mascot familiar is within 60 feet of you, you can teleport as an action, swapping places with the familiar. If your destination space is too small for you to occupy, the teleportation fails and is wasted. Once you teleport in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you expend a spell slot of second level or higher to do it again. So find familiar is always going to be a great spell. You you will never regret, unless you're in some really wacky game, you will never regret <laughs> you will never regret taking find familiar. It's always gonna be uh useful if if for no other reason than getting that help action. There's so much you can do with a familiar. The scouting uh, flavor of your character, uh, having it just, just, I mean, come on, it's familiar. You, you know, you know what this is. Uh, so that's a great spell, great spell to get. These stat blocks are strong. They're great for familiars. Now I use a special kind of find familiar, um, for my thing. We have a, it's called conjured companions. If you want to learn more about it, check it out over at patreoncom slash fry minis and you can get it there. Uh, otherwise, uh, th these are these are good. These are definitely above uh, like the owl type uh, type stat block. And we'll take a look at these here in just a second too. The attack action swap thing, that's fine. I, I get that. Like it's nice to have. I, how often are you using it? Probably not at all. But it's a good option to throw on there. I hope it doesn't eat into the the budget of the feat, the power level. But it's a good to have. But the real, real sparkler here is that teleport. Uh, I'm movement, movement, movement is super important, and I like to play fairly tactically. I like to to think things through and not just stand there and fireball. And if that's how you want to play, that's cool. No, no shade. But I like to to move around a little bit. And so having this teleport here is a really cool option. Uh, and I like that you can do, you can expend spell slots to use it again. I really enjoy that mechanic. I think that's a good way to like have the feet, have the power come out of you uh, while still being a reasonable cost. Now, I mean, if you, if you can't cast spells, like that, that's rough, but it is a, it is a magic school. So that's okay. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the stat blocks for these mascots. Okay, first we're going to look at the art elemental mascot for Prismari. So we have a lot of resistances. We have some immunity. Oh, we have 18 hit points, really solid death burst. When the elemental dies, it explodes. Uh, DC 11 con save or be blinded for a minute. Captivating artistry target elemental targets. One creature you can see within 30 feet of it. DC 12 charisma save or be charmed. And we have a melee attack and a ranged attack. One does fire damage, one does cold damage. I mean, that seems pretty cool to me. Okay, we have the Quandrix option now. Fractal Mascot. 27 hit points. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, 
immune to poison. I think these are probably all immune to poison. Uh, relative density. The fractal can move through a creature and objects as if they were difficult to rain. Okay. Quantum strike. It does more damage if it attacks something medium or bigger. That's interesting. And a bonus action. And it can increase its size. Up to huge? Wow. That's really interesting. Although, it is kind of funny to think about a uh, huge creature only dealing 1d4 damage. And it can shrink back down to uh, tiny. <laughs> that one's really interesting. That one provides a lot of utility. Maybe getting around areas or climbing over areas. You can, I mean, if it's huge, you can hop on its back. I like this one a lot. It, it, seems, it seems cool. Okay, our silver quill option, Inkling Mascot. Ooh, okay, here we go. 30 feet of hover flying speed. Interesting. Immune to damage? Immune to blind, charm, deaf, and exhausted. Prone. Wow. 60 feet of blind sight? This is, uh, this is definitely something. Amorphous. It can squeeze through a one-inch hole. It can spray ink. Uh, DC 12 con save or be blinded. And it can take the hide action as a bonus action. Tell me that's not great for scouting. Holy cow. Bonus action, hide. It can squeeze through holes. It can hover, so you don't have to worry about like steps. Really, really strong option with this one. Okay, Wither Bloom's pest mascot is uh it's spicy. People have strong feelings about this one already. Alright, so 22 hit points, so so it's got a good amount of life to it, right? But here's the thing, regeneration. The pest regains five hit points at the start of its turn if it has at least one. If it takes fire, that doesn't heal. Uh, Spiny hide at the start of each of its turn, it deals a D4 piercing damage to any creature grappling it or that it is grappling. I don't know how often either one of those things is happening, but that's fun. And it's got a little bite. So Josh from uh, Dungeoneers Pack, he explained to me that these things are harvested by Wither Bloom. Uh, to get magic life force or something from them because they can regenerate, which is really cool. Like, I think that's really neat. Uh, but that this can regenerate five hit points. I mean, that sounds like a lot, right? But who, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> like, tell me how that's really going to impact anything. Uh, if I'm not going to make somebody track the hit points of their familiar, right? Now, if you're trying to do something with it, if you're trying to like really boost it up and make it go fight, cool but um <laughs> like if you heal it heals i don't i don't know something like that not, not an official rule or anything but um i'm not concerned about this if i should be concerned please let me know in the comments where where i need to be worried about this but i'm okay and with lore hold we have the spirit statue mascot so right off the bat this is medium that's a really interesting for a familiar to, for it's like regular size to be medium. I guess the other one could get up to huge, which is just bonkers, but I'm, I'm used to mask or <laughs> familiars being tiny. 14 AC is pretty good for one of these. Lots of skill proficiencies. Uh, death bursts when the spirit statue is reduced to zero. It crumbles. Uh, burst of ghostly white flame. All creatures within five feet of it do a DC 12 con save or take a D6 radiant. Okay, that's nothing to worry about. Slam. All right. Okay, basic attack and counsel of the past twice per day. The spirit statue touches one creature. Uh, once within the next 10 minutes, the creature can roll a D4 and add it to an ability check of its choice immediately after rolling a D20. All right, that's good utility. This one, this one definitely seems a little more tame to me than some of the other ones. I've always liked the idea of wizards having shield guardians uh, and I wanted to play a wizard with a shield guardian or something like a, like a big defender with it. Right. And uh, obviously that's way too powerful to get something early on. So I think getting something like this and then maybe as you as you level up, maybe you can work with your DM to evolve it into that or something. Uh, but having this like maybe baby shield guardian, I think is interesting. OK, so that's it. We've just got those two feats. Uh, they're both pretty good. I like them. I really like how tied in they are. I just feel like once we get into the backgrounds, which stay tuned for that video, I think that's when some people might try to get up to some shenanigans. 
but that's uh, a story for another day. So please like, subscribe, share everything. We'll see you in the next one, hopefully real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.